everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot La Mode. And today on Hot La Mode, we are reacting to another luxury handbag collection. This time by Teresa Romer, who has a $100,000 Chanel bag collection, allegedly. Yes, I am wearing an apron. Thank you, Peter Doe. I'm also wearing some hood by air as well, in case you're wondering, and glasses. Because sometimes I run out of contacts. But yes, we're gonna be reacting to Teresa Romer, who from what I understand is a sort of like oil heiress. And from this $100,000 Chanel collection, I have to say it is quite extensive quite jam-packed and quite full of some little treasures that I've never seen before or maybe I've never noticed from different Chanel collections. So let's get into it. Hey peeps. Am I a peep? So I'm gonna do something new. We're going to do a very intimate evening with Teresa Romer inside her world's largest closet. Yeah, also I probably should have prefaced this before, but if you don't know, Teresa Romer has, from what I understand, the world's largest closet. It's like three floors big. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of Birkins, there's a lot of Hermes, there's a Supreme Louis Vuitton, there's a, you know, Chanel backpack, there's, there's a lot of stuff there. And I'm going to introduce you to you, this is probably part one. Um, we're going to do different parts. Tonight we're going to do the Chanel. So some of you have been dying oh my God, that's a lot of Chanel. all the different collections that I have so, and kind of see them. That's a lot of them. Chanel. So Maybe tonight wrong. we're going to spend some time Yes, it's almost bedtime, so that's why we're in our jammies. And I thought, how fun, a little cozy, intimate evening with Teresa. Why not, you know, we're all under quarantine anyway, so why not do a little intimate evening in our pajamas looking at purse collections. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm going to start on this side. It's funny because I'm such an Hermes girl. Yeah, I can tell by the Birkins. And I love Louis Vuitton, and I'm always like, yeah, I don't have that many Chanel's. And then when I really stopped and took a look tonight to get ready to film. I was like, gosh, I really do. Cause they're yeah, all, a lot of Chanel's. All over here and they're all up there. So let's dive in and take a closer look at all the different Chanel's that I have. Me, an inspiration. Okay guys, so we're gonna start on this side. So I've taken the liberty of oh, taking wow. all of the purses that were up on the very top shelves down. Oh, also, okay, so like, just as an FYI, you can see the little spaceship bag. We saw that in a Huda Catan's video, and it is a Chanel rocket resin minortier, but that essentially means like little clutch or little handbag, and it's sort of when Chanel and other brands do more of these sort of like, kitschy little pieces that aren't really handbags, wouldn't really use it in everyday sort of, you know, atmosphere, but they did it when they did the shipping container collection where they had little shipping container uh, bags. They did it with a rocket. You know, it's sort of something that's like fun and kitschy that their clients who can afford a $10,000 bag buy. I'm excited to see what's coming up. Some of you wonder how I get those down. Well, the old trusty hook. It's a hook just like you would see at the stores. <laughs> So, I wish. That's the easiest, fastest, best way to do it. So, so when I okay. first started my Chanel collections. Oh, wow. Okay, this is like a classic Chanel flat bag in the nice quilted leather. You know, Karl Lagerfeld modernized it by putting the CC intertwining, but originally the quilting came from Coco Chanel herself. If you didn't know, it just didn't have the CC. It was more of like a little sort of knob that you twisted. When you see these up here, quilted purses that come in Chanel. Normal, classic, some are patent leather, some are mm -hmm. just, and they're all different colors. But anyways, this is how I started off buying Chanel, was just these normal, classic, very classic Chanel's. Then I kind of got tired of just the classic Chanel. Like, they get very tiring very easily, in my opinion. Sometimes I felt like they were just too old lady-ish, but not really, because they're just very classic, right? So, once, I got me a little collection going of the regular quilted uh, Chanel's in various different colors. Oh, they're all big I then like that. To Jeez. venture out and start buying the more unusual, and that's really how I buy. Love Chanel's this. Now. Yes, I have some classics like this one. She's big. She looks like a big old maxi bag. I think that the different sizes of the flat bags have different names. Some are like jumbo, maxi, mini. So I think that might be a maxi. I saw this in a previous video where it was kind of like one of my worst buys because I feel like it's just like oh. a big briefcase kind of thing. 
Um, these two I don't wear Ooh, very don't often. Like that. Don't like that one down there with the little, it's not actually like quilted. Well, I mean, maybe it is actually quilted, but it doesn't have the raised quilting that you sort of know and some people love from mm -hmm. Chanel. Just because they're really not my style as much as I thought they were gonna be, but I can't yeah, the one on the right. stand to Yikes. tear them out of my hands yet. <laughs> so so um, then I really got into these. Really got into these. I mean like went head over heels. So the green one that we're seeing here on the right, I believe was introduced in the spring summer 2012 collection. Sometimes Chanel like releases bags that don't actually have to do with the runway collections, but they're sort of like similar to the runway pieces. So I don't know if this was actually on the runway, I can't remember, but I'm pretty positive this is from the spring summer. 2012 collection. The other one on the left, I'm sure, is another one that was from around that time, maybe 2012, 2013, 2014. It says 30 Rue Cambon, Paris, you know, it has the double CC logo. I think a lot of people that want to let everybody know that they can buy Chanel, you know, would appreciate that. It's not like the classic Chanel bags that we think about in the black quilted leather. Even that green one, or like light green, has a sort of you know, weave and texture that might even remind some people of like Chanel tweed jackets. So I guess maybe that's why. These are so much fun. Here it is springtime. It's time to, to tear these out of the closet and start wearing them. They're so light, they're so easy. You can put so much stuff in them. They're big, they Literally. look big to me. When the beige and the green weren't enough, I had to really go full bore with the, the beautiful black leather one, so. Yeah. Ooh, so, no. So I'm not a big fan of these studded bags. I, again, I just think it like looks really tacky and sad and gross, but that's just me. Yeah. So I have a nice collection of them going on. So got the green, got the tan, got the black leather. This is kind of more my biker babe kind of look. <laughs> and then uh, to each their own. To be shizzle, as further. we say in Got France. This one. Ooh, that is hideous. Love, love, love. Okay, so this is some sort of like perforated Chanel bag. I don't know if you guys can see it, but there are little sort of dots in the same way they're the studs that say like Chanel on it. And to me, this is very like Virginie Viard, end of Karl Lagerfeld, rain at Chanel, which to me is sort of like the worst time to be buying accessories, just in my opinion. I just don't really feel like it's chic. It feels very tacky in your face. Very like, rah, rah, I buy Chanel, this is what I do, ah. Like, no offense, that's not me. If I was buying Chanel, I'd be much more chic and subtle and luxurious and wouldn't even want people to know that I was buying Chanel, but that's just me. But I do genuinely feel that this is a hideous bag. Want for a Chanel backpack. Oh, okay, listen, the Chanel backpack, I get it. It's in the quilted sort of style. It has the chain with the little black running through it. Is it miraculous, amazing, wonderful? No, but you know, some people love that double C. Everybody's gotta have a Chanel backpack. One of these. Oh no, don't like that. You know, and I'm one of these people. Cute, nah, cute that backpack. one is a bit love, blah love, too. Love, love. Some people are so into their brands that they know the specific name of every single purse. Uh-huh. I don't. That's like rich rich. When you don't give a shit, you just buy it. You don't know the name of it. You don't care to know the name of it. You just buy it. I just look at it. I see it. I like it. I want it. I buy it. Okay, Ariana, we see so, you. Some people, I know, I know my friends that know every single name of every bag they have. I don't really care. I just, <laughs> I buy them for investments. Look at this one, how cute is oh. this? Oh. Looks like a shirt. This is a quilted blue bag, and obviously as you can see, it sort of has like a trompe l'oeil effect where it looks like one of the classic Chanel tweed jackets. So it has little pockets, it has the gold buttons, and the little neck moment. And to me, this is one of like the funnier Chanel moments. It plays into itself. It's sort of like an in-house joke, which personally I always find really great from brands is when they have like their own inside jokes that unless you really know the history or care about it, you wouldn't get it. So I'm down with this. It's blue and it's black. It's so cute. So cute. Love, love, love. Then, this is so cute, I call it my, oh. when I just wanna carry my phone in a wallet. Okay, so this is another quilted Chanel bag, and this is one of the crossbody phone holder bags. Um, I don't know how big it is, I don't know what 
type of phones it would fit. I feel like probably not the bigger iPhones or Androids or Samsungs or whatever the big phones might not fit them, but it's, you know, sort of that modernization of Chanel in my mind that I think Karl Lagerfeld was very good at. It might be ridiculous to spend, you know, upwards of a thousand dollars on a crossbody phone holder bag, but some people have that money and some people want to put their iPhones in their Chanel bags. So I guess it's sold. Wallet, not a wallet, but a credit card and some money. So cute, so cute. Then I literally keep some of my rarer ones inside glass cases. So oh. you'll see this beautiful okay. sparkly one. So this is a black leather boy bag that has a Swarovski crystal in the middle. So that's why it's very silvery and shiny. I'm sure that it costs quite a pretty penny because it must have taken a lot of time to really put all those Swarovski crystals on. Again, the boy bag to me is like the flat bag where everybody sort of has it. If you're gonna invest in a Chanel bag, a lot of people like to really go for the classics. I prefer people to go for the more interesting styles because at least you have something interesting and not something that everybody else has. But I guess in a way, this is sort of a customization on the classic boy bag, so. That gets to stay inside the case. This rare one that stays inside the case. And this is another boy bag. This one looks smaller. It has some sort of like over top handle. Um, and then it's like piped in sort of like a maroon ish. I couldn't find any info on this bag. Uh, a lot of these bags, Teresa unfortunately doesn't know the names of, and I couldn't find some of them because it's hard to be like a Chanel bag with maroon piping and get results on the internet that are accurate. But again, I'm not a big boy bag person. I don't really think they're very interesting. I don't think that they're very chic either. Maybe back in like 2014, 2015, you could get away with one, but now I think they're a bit outdated. Inside the case, beautiful one that gets to oh. stay inside. This is a large python flat bag. Now, as you can see, it has the double CC in it. Again, it's not really that interesting to me. And if it is python, it might have been made prior to Chanel sort of stopping working with exotic skins and animal skins. That was something that sort of happened maybe in 2018, 2017, 2019. But yeah, I, I wouldn't spend $5,600 on that. Inside the case, yes. This beautiful red one. Another like, red boy fab? bag How quilted. Come fab not helping her film? Well, Fab had the sniffles the other day and so Instead of letting him infect us with whatever he had, we decided to let him go home and oh, okay. for a few days. So this is another boy bag. I feel like, as you can tell now, the boy bags sort of have these architectural baseboard style that pipes it, and then it has the quilting in the middle, and it has the sort of double CCs on this little block piece of metal. Now you know, anatomy of a boy bag. But these are a patent leather, and now the patent leather obviously is a bit more glossy. It really shines, but you know, it feels a bit metallic in a way. Again, does that make me any more interested in boy bags? Absolutely not. But do we chaison? Beautiful blue one. Yes. Love, 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 love. So some of them get to actually stay inside glass cases because I feel that they're a little more special than the ones that we keep up here. But anyways, that's the start of the Chanel collection. Then we're going to go up here because lo and behold, this case that I just recently put the glass doors on um, holds a lot of Chanel and I forgot. <laughs> so let's go up the stairs and look at them. I wish I could be there. So guys, we're up here it. on the staircase. Oh wow. Okay. Just recently I put glass doors on this because I got tired of people being able to literally walk by and touch things and grab things. So we just recently put glass doors on this to help protect the stuff that's in there. Anyways, guys, um, I started with the Lego collection. Okay. So I ended up with four bags out of the Lego collection. Okay. So this Lego bag, if you guys do not know, is from originally the spring-summer 2013. The reason why you sort of have 
the Lego style or why they called it the Lego brick is because I'm pretty positive Karl Lagerfeld was sort of referencing sustainability, different kinds of energy. He had big old windmills and the models all walked on like little solar panels on the runway and that sort of crazy Chanel set lifestyle. I assume maybe the Lego brick was maybe a reference to building or sustainability. I don't really know how Legos is sustainable, but that's where it originally comes from. These bags, I would say personally, I'd never spend the money on them to buy them, but I do find it very interesting that people did buy them and Teresa is saying that she has four of them. So the girls were spending oodles of money on them. It's a kitschy clutch bag from Chanel. It's sort of that Minardier sort of style that's a little bit ridiculous. People will spend the money on it if they have it. And Chanel sort of gets to like make fun little takes on pop culture here, like this little Chanel double C Lego brick. Aren't they just the cutest? They look like little Lego purses. Well, they are Lego purses, but they look like little Lego toys. But anyways, I ended up with the red they one. They must all be plastic the blue one, too. And like then resin. a multicolored gold one, as well as a multicolored silver one. This is the multicolored silver one. Oh, okay. Okay, so now this silver one here is actually from the fall winter 2013 collection. So it's a collection that followed it. And there was that big globe and all the models walked around the globe and they walked around the globe like three at a time. It's really confusing, but that's where the silver and glitter and black sort of came in. In case you were wondering, now you know, again, I think actually these glittery ones are far worse than the sort of monochromatic ones. At least the monochromatic ones, you're like, oh my god, a Lego! But like, I've never seen a Swarovski crystal covered Lego in my life. Maybe I was going to the wrong places, hanging out with the wrong people as a child. But, you know, I feel like Chanel and Carl and these brands sort of appease people that just like showy shit. Like, oh, my, my bag glitters, it's so sparkly, but it's like, Teresa, show us the $100,000 Chanel tweed jacket collection. Or at this point, it's probably like a million dollar Chanel tweed jacket collection. Like, show me the clothes. Yes, isn't it pretty? No, not really. Yes. But and then a multi-colored multi multi uh, gold one. Then I ended up getting this um, cutest little Chanel. Looks like a little roller bag, doesn't it? Okay. So now this is another of the Minardier bags. It's from spring, summer 2016. Now, if you remember spring, summer 2016 Chanel collection, or at least ready to wear, it was the one that was held in the aeroport. So all of the girls had on their, you know, crazy little outfits and they were carrying the little roller bags as they're going through the airport terminals. I think that's another sort of kitschy fun reference from Chanel back to the collection. So, you know, you know, when you see that, oh, this is a reference to that Chanel collection. But again, I'm sure that this cost upwards of four figures, probably five, because the minority airbags are expensive, because I'm sure that they don't make a lot of them, and I think they also know they can sell them for a crazy price. Yes, it has. It comes with a chain so that you can carry it over mm. your shoulder, but I like to display it as a little roller bag. So cute. Again, two wishes on I have this what I buy. Oh, all right. <gasps> it's one of my favorites. Okay, so now this is a black and gold lambskin camellia bag. Now, if you do not know, camellias are very central to the Chanel identity, whether it was Coco Chanel, Karl Lagerfeld, Virginie Viard, all of them have referenced and utilized the camellia because it's just so easily associated with the house. Now here you have the camellia sort of covering this little Chanel flat bag in gold and black. and. Gold buttons are very signature to Chanel. Black tweed is also very signature to Chanel. So in reality, it's a bag that makes a lot of sense. It's sort of easy, it's understandable. If you like Chanel, if you like the history of it, if you like the signatures and styles, I think it makes sense why people would buy them. So incredibly beautiful. Isn't it pretty? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, I'm not a fan of gold as much as I am silver. Mm -hmm. But I respect that. Okay. I have this amazing... Uh, a little quilted. quilted clutch for those wanting a quilted clutch. Clutch that I travel with a lot. As it's thin, black goes with everything all the time, and it's just... She lives in uh, Texas. Quick. Does she wear black all the time in Texas? It must get hot down there. I it would packs presume. Well. It's always in my carry-on. This cute little Chanel. Another small little quilted bag. Quilted Chanel. I love how it says Chanel on top mm. in gold. 
but just really cute. These two I travel with a lot because they're small and they fit perfectly inside my in my carry-on and they don't It'd take be up so interesting space. to see how much of this stuff she actually course, uses the Chanel every month. Basketball. Okay. Yes. So I have a controversial thing I'm gonna say. Teresa, in her infinite inability to name her bags, has incorrectly called this a basketball bag because I spent literally an hour looking for Chanel basketball bags and the only thing I could find was like a quilted net bag that people put a Chanel basketball in. But this is actually a beach bag from whichever collection it was where they had the full actual beach and the lapping waves at the Grand Palais, which honestly, still crazy to me that they had a whole ass beach inside of a building in Paris. But this is another beach bag. It is part of the Minardier sort of style. I'm sure that these aren't too expensive because from what I understand, it's not really a lot of work. It's sort of just like a black and transparent resin uh, and a quilted chain. So I would, would assume, I'd assume that they weren't as expensive, but again, it's just not a basketball bag. Yes, I've only carried it one time. Can you believe that? So no, far. I can't. Just one time. I need to break it out more often. Yeah, you do. Oh my god. I remember when I got the hula hoop. Oh my god. Yes. Now, the hula hoop is another style from the spring summer 2013 runway, the one with the windmills and solar panels. Now, you probably all have seen the gigantic hula hoop bags. I mean, Gia Gunn sort of helped to make it a bit more mainstream when she brought a, I'm gonna say fake one on RuPaul's Drag Race on her entrance look, but this is a mini version of it, although I'm a little bit disappointed she didn't buy the big version. Like, if anybody was gonna buy the big version, I would assume it would be Teresa here, so that's a bit sad. I wanted the big one for $10,000, but then I was like, it's so big, I'm always gonna have to buy a seat on the airplane just to put my okay, purse. Okay, you're an oil heiress. Uh, I, I would hope you would. For years and years and years. Of course I call this one the space. Oh, okay. It's so much fun. So this is a bag called the Evening on the Moon Resin Bag. Now it is again, another a Minaldier sort of style. It doesn't actually look like the moon in my opinion. It looks more like a nebula or something, you know, a little bit like 60s Jetsons. You know, you can see the sort of silver styles at the top and bottom. It sort of looks like an atom. Don't really get it, but I'm assuming that it was part of the space collection from Chanel, but you know, I could see this isn't like super spacey in your facey, and I would get maybe this is a little bit more everyday wear than some of the other Minardier bags. Yes, and I love that it's white and silver, so I really wear this one a lot in okay. the time. A Good lot. To know. This one also gets packed a lot because Ooh, it's flat. That. It's that, thin. That so I can always count Ooh, on this one to be a leather clutch no, for me when I travel. Done. She's bench her. Put her away. Throw her out. She's I done. I love the Chanel. Oh. Perfume All right, bag. this is a Chanel perfume bag. So I've seen transparent Chanel perfume bags. I've seen black Chanel perfume bags like this is another one of the Menardier styles, but I've never seen a red one. Now Chanel a few years ago did do a red Chanel number no. five perfume actual bottle. So like if you were buying Chanel number no. five, the perfume, you could get a red bottle. And obviously this bag is a reference back to Chanel number no. five again, like haha, ha, hee hee, inside joke, Chanel, blah, blah, blah. I'm interested to know where she got this and how many of these were actually made. Now, I'm not gonna say that Teresa's bought a fake. It just doesn't seem like something that she would need to do, but I'd just be so interested because I've never seen it. I haven't found photos of this bag anywhere. I'm sure maybe there are only like a few in existence. Otherwise, we probably would have seen a lot more of them. And again, when we talk about people that have this kind of money to spend on luxury goods, they have really good relationships with their sales associates. Now, Teresa lives in Texas, from what I know, Texas is a very important business and marketplace for a lot of luxury brands. I mean, historically, a lot of the Texas oil tycoons had a lot of their wives go to Paris and sort of buy and spend a lot of money on haute couture and bags like these in a way to sort of build business relationships. I mean, even Valentino, from what I understand, is closing their 
Fifth Avenue store, and I will only be focusing on their store in the U.S. in Texas. So it really is a place where people with a lot of money go, and apparently they spend a lot of money on bags too. So I assume that Teresa probably has a very good relationship with her sales associate that, you know, they understand she has lots of bucks to spend, and it's something important that they need to keep on with. So I would assume it's not a fake, but I would assume it's something that's very limited edition that wasn't really talked about. But Teresa had a very good relationship with somebody at Chanel and that's how she got one. Yes. Look how cute that is. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. I like the black better because it's so much Lego. more like Chanel. But the Lego just... collection, the black and white one. Yes. Oh, this bag is actually called the Lego brick barcode bag. So it's meant to look like a barcode. I don't actually know which season it's from. I would assume it's either spring, summer 2013, fall, winter 2013 or spring, summer 2014, because maybe it's a reference back to like barcodes in a grocery store. And you know how I love that Chanel grocery store collection. So that's my guesstimate on it, but I couldn't find too much information about it, unfortunately. So cute, so cute. To so some, cute. Teresa, to some, not all. Everybody needs to Oh, okay. Yeah. She really doesn't know the names of the bags and it makes me laugh. She's very honest about it. Now, I, again, Googling ladybug like an idiot for an hour. This is actually a scarab bag. Now, the scarab bag is actually from pre-fall 2019, which was one of Karl Lagerfeld's last collections. And it was actually shown in New York at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, which has a very heavy and big old Egyptian collection. The scarab is obviously a reference to that. Now there is hieroglyphics on the back of this scarab bag and it has like the double C's and then a bunch of like little hieroglyphics. But from what I understand, it means nothing. It's just like gibberish. But it has come in handy a few times for a few events. And then this cute little monster. Okay, so if you guys do not know, this is another not classic Chanel style, but one that is quite well known and pretty popular from what I understand, and it's called the Vanity Case. Now, I'm sure that it was probably designed as a way to sort of reference the idea of like a vanity case, which is actually something that you would put your makeup and beauty utensils in. Now here, it's a sort of black, simple leather, maybe a pebble leather in case we wanted to bring, I don't know. And it has the double CCs on it and the double CCs actually have little gold bars that sort of cap the end of the Cs. So again, it's sort of playing into the gold and black Chanel aspects. Do I like it? No, but is it there? Yes. And I have it in these other two colors over here too that I will show you. Oh, and it has quilting so, on it too. Interesting. Cute little items, cute little collections. Yes, I consider a lot of my purses investments. For um, what? I try now to really pick certain ones that I feel like are invest more of an investment, not just to buy to buy. Does that make sense? I, listen, the whole idea of like bags as investments, personally, I don't really see it. I just don't think the ROI on it is incroyable. I, I just don't get that like thought process. I mean, I understand sort of the Minaudier bags from certain collections. I think that actually probably is a smart investment, but the thing is you're gonna have to find certain buyers, very like specific sort of luxury buyers that would wanna buy those sorts of pieces. And, and again, you know, you're buying something for $10,000. Do I think the price point of it will go up by one and a half, two times, three times? Probably not, at least in my opinion. Like I've seen a lot of these bags that are these minority air bags on like first dibs and you know, Vestaire Collective or whatever. and they don't always sell for the prices that people expect. I really do think that a lot of garments, fashion items, are not like a Picasso or a Dolly or Mark Rothko. It's just, it doesn't have the same sort of value, unfortunately. So I don't know about this whole idea of these bags as investments. I think they're more so just something to spend money on. It used to be I just bought to have one, you know? Um, and then I started realizing that I wanted to be more selective and actually pick certain ones that were actually worth more money and would continue to increase in value. So um, let me show you these other two cute ones over here real fast. 
are the ones I was telling you about. So. Oh. This is another vanity case. As we're seeing, it's white and black and has the gold caps on the double CCs and it's quilted. You know, this one's better. This one feels more like 90s Chanel, 80s Chanel to me, which is kind of cool, kind of different, kind of sweet. So, all right. Spring like. Can't wait to wear them here in the spring. If we ever get to get outside, right? <laughs> I mean, get outside, yeah, but go anywhere. I mean, like. If I had all those goddamn bags, I'd be wearing every single one of them. I'd be doing like different bag of the day and posting it on Instagram. I'd be like, okay, today is the Birkin, today is this Kelly, today is this vintage Chanel. I'd have a good ass time. And then I also got it in this style, oh, in the same like. color. So kind of got them as a, as a. No, no, no. She can go. Or she whatever can, you want to call it. She very, evaporate. very cute. She can evaporate. One handle, two. And then this cute little thing. This so is cute. a it's a round CC lambskin crossbody, from what I understand. Oh, so cute. It's okay. You know, so it feels like a hat box idea of my Chanel collection oh my god totally forgot I have the Chanel backpack too I carry oh. all of my kickball okay I was wondering if she's gonna talk about the Chanel bag this is the Chanel bag from spring summer 2014 this was like one of the first things that I ever saw that I was like wow that is so cool like that is fashion like that is so interesting like only oh why actually this one sort of gives me good little memories I know it costs like five thousand dollars or it cost five thousand dollars at that point stuff in. so <laughs> half the time you guys don't see well, at least she's look, at least she uses it i'm happy inside. to hear about so that this is the backpack i use for kickboxing when i go to to nine round kickboxing good so for her i have that one too at least so you know she's utilizing the girls because that, it's always in the trunk of my car <laughs> i counted the amount of bags that she showed i believe it's 32 different chanel bags which that's a lot of chanel i'm gonna guesstimate here I definitely think that this Chanel collection is worth more than $100,000. Like, no, probably five of those bags off the top of my head were already rounding out half. Good for her. Very interested. Would love to see all of that stuff in person when coronavirus is over. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys on the next one. And let me know some more handbag collections that you guys want me to talk about in the future, please. So again, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. And T-T-Y-L.